Have you ever thought about traveling all the way across the United States in an RV? Well, we did, and this is our video of how we did it. So come along and enjoy our journey. I'm Bob. And I'm Tam. And we are Bob and Tam's Excellent, Excellent Adventures. Adventures. Let's go. So first off, here's a dilemma that we have. We have to get to Florida by January the 11th. And we still have to spend Christmas with the kids and the grandkids. So how are we gonna do this? First off, we're gonna stop and figure out how long it's gonna take us, what route we're gonna to need to take. There's a lot of planning that goes into this, to travel cross country in your RV. So stick with us and see our tricks and tips that we can have for you to plan your trip to go cross country like we did. The first step in planning is our route. How are we going to get to Florida? It is going to be the middle of winter, so we have to decide which route we're going to take. The 40 or the 10 would be our best bet, so we decided on the most southern route. So we left home, headed south, hit Quartzsite to catch the 10. Next we have to figure out how many miles a day we want to drive and how many nights we're going to stay at each stop. There's a lot of different options we could use. We could either boondock all the way there, boondock a little bit, or we could stay in campgrounds. One of the things about the campgrounds is we got to think about is electricity. Because in electricity, it's cold. We don't want to use up all of our propane. We have an electric heater for that, and it might snow. You never know. Another decision that we have to make is how are we going to fuel up? Sometimes it's really hard to get in with a 30-foot trailer and the truck to maneuver yourself in. So what are we going to do there? Let's take a look at an option that we decided to go with. All right, let me tell you a little bit about our fuel card. Uh, basically, you first need to make sure this only works for diesel vehicles. So if you've got a diesel, you can listen. If it's gas, you can skip a few seconds and see what else is going on. Um, you can look below, down below here. I'm going to put the 800 number down there that you can check out to find out more information about the card I'm about to explain. And also down here, you'll see the website for you to go to to check out the website that's going on there. You sign up online for the card. And when you sign up online on the card, you have to send them your bank information. You know, some people are paranoid that they don't want to give out their debit card because that's how this card is going to end up working is it's just like your debit card. You go to the pump, you pay for it, and they take it out of your account the next day. So if you don't like doing it that way, you can also go open up another checking account and use a separate debit card just for that. That's what some people are actually doing too. Uh, Nowadays, it doesn't really matter either way, whatever you decide to go. But what you can save is at Love's and at TA's, Truck Stops of America, you can get anywhere from 30 to 50 cents a gallon. On this whole trip that we just did, we averaged about 49 cents a gallon savings. What you also get to do is get right into the truck lanes so you can get in and get out. Uh, once you go a few times, you'll figure out the best time to go when the truckers aren't so busy. But I mean, we've out of all the gas stations we went to, we probably only had two that we had to sit there a little while and wait for the truck in front of us to move. The rest of them we pulled right up, gassed up, took off. Uh, with the card, you're able to do it right at the pump. You don't have to go in. If you want to go in and get a receipt, you can get it out of the trucker mailbox. You just hit your pump number and say, yes, I want a receipt. You go in there, use the bathroom, come out, and they'll have the little slip in the mailbox. So you just grab your receipt if you want a receipt. And then about 30 minutes later, after you pull out of the pumps, you can go on their website and you can actually see how much money you saved and what they're going to charge you. What do they have into it? Two things. One, they're going to charge you 10% on what you save. So if you save $8, they're going to take 80 cents of that. The other thing they get is they're getting a bigger discount for their trucking company because they're using more fuel stations, uh, more trucks on the road. So they're buying more gas, so it's going to give them a better discount. Uh, they're working with some of the other truck stops to get discounts through them. But right now, the Loves and the TAs is the one that gives the biggest discount. Loves, we pretty much hit Loves all the way. I think we used two TAs the whole time we were out. Uh, so it worked out pretty good. It saves you from trying to get to a gas station, trying to get in, you can't get out or you can't get in, cars are in the way. Uh, the other issue we've had, people say they use Google Earth. Sometimes Google Earth don't give you a good perspective of how the station is. You get there and it's a convenience store and it's all piled in with cars. So that could turn into a real problem too. So if you're interested in the card, once again, here's the phone number. 
Check it out. Give them a call. They'll talk to you. They're very friendly. Make sure you tell them it's Bob and Tam's Excellent Adventures recommended you if you get one because we do get something out of it. And then anybody you refer, you'll get a bonus out of it too. So it's kind of a referral thing. So uh, check it out. We did save a lot of money on gas. We're going to go ahead and take a look at our camping clubs that we belong to and also to the apps that we have that can find us the location. So let's take a quick look at those. So starting off, we have our Thousand Trails membership. We have our Coast to Coast membership. We also belong to a couple of clubs. One is Boondockers Welcome. We have Harvest Host, Passport America. We're members of Escapees. We also belong to the Elks Lodge and the Moose Lodge. Some of the apps that we use, uh, one is not an app, one is freecampsites.net that we've stumbled over that has a lot of really great places for boondocking or Walmarts, all that different things and has a lot of reviews. Some of the apps that we have that I have on my phone is Find RV Parks, Free Roam, Overnight RV, Park Advisor, RV Parky, and the dirt. The dirt more gives you a little bit more information about each campground or information of different places that you can stay, but I still use that one too. So the first night we headed out, we stopped at a Harvest Host. This was 240 miles we drove the first day. It was Superstitious Farms in Mesa, Arizona. Second night was in Wilcox, Arizona. We stopped at the Elks Lodge where it was only $15. They gave you electric and water, but the bad news was it was 4,000 feet in elevation. It dropped to 23 degrees that night and we woke up to snow. Yep. That day we drove 196 miles. The next day we couldn't take the cold, so we drove 616 miles to Sonora, Texas. We stayed at a campground, Sonora Trailer Park, this was $22 a night, and it only got to 27 degrees that night, but we arrived after dark, and the guy Mike that was there helped us out and got us in our campsite. You can also check out other videos that we have, a lot of the campgrounds that we've already visited, and uh, you can check them out and see what they are about and what you can see there. And the one in Sonora, there's a video on that one. Next one, we drove 302 miles. We went all the way to Columbus, Texas, and we went to a thousand trails, Colorado River Resort. Uh, we have a video up on that. You can check that out. We had only water and electric there because we kind of came in at the last minute with no reservations, and the staff there was really good, and they were able to get us in there over the New Year's Day, uh, New Year's Eve weekend. So that worked out pretty good. <laughs> Then we went to Beaumont, Texas. This was 157 miles we drove this day. It was a Passport America, full hookups, and it was $22.50 a night. We have a video on that too. On the day we drove the 616 miles, we passed up a Harvest Host, a Boondockers Welcome, and two boondocking spots that we originally had set that we were going to stay, but since it was so cold and we drove the 616 miles, we avoided those spots. We had to call and cancel. The next one we went to, we decided to avoid this one also. It was in Louisiana. It was a boondockers welcome. We were on Highway 12. There was an accident. It was rainy. It was getting late. It was dark. The guy wasn't going to be home and we were supposed to park in his yard. So we skipped that one and we just went to the Mississippi uh, rest stop area and that was in Burlington, Mississippi. It was right when you got in. It was like mile marker number two. It was the first border. As soon as you crossed over the border line there, it was the very first rest area that you could find. One of the nice things about Mississippi is they do let you stay overnight in their rest areas. And this one happened to have an actual area that was only for RVs. We didn't see that till after we left, so we actually parked where the truckers were. But they do have spots there going eastbound for RVs only. All right, our next stop was in Baker, Florida. It was 215 miles. It was also was a boondockers welcome. You can check down and see the video on that one. Uh, we went there and checked it all out. It was really a nice place. And what was nice about that, there was no charge. But there was no hookups either. So it was more like boondocking, but a luxury boondocking. Uh, the next place was Wellborn, Florida. This was a 250-mile day. It was a boondockers welcome also. It was Barry D's. We had 50 amp service and water. They had a place where you could dump your gray tank also. We stayed there three nights. They charged us $5 a night. We have a video on that also. 
Next stop that we stopped at is in Bushnell, Florida. That's one of the escapees, the Sumpner Oaks RV Park. Uh, there's also a video up on that, so you want to check that one out. That actually is the last video before this one. You can see what it was. There was $30.52 a night for full hookups. That was the escapees price. Uh, then we finally got to our destination. The reason we went to Florida was in Lakeland, Florida. It was 71 miles we drove that day. It was at the Fun and Sun Expo. It was a campground and an exposition hall. We went to the RV thing from the Motorhome Experiment. We met up with a RV rally and there was 39, 20 a night. Full hookups. It was a fun time. We've got videos on that too. And that's a really neat campground because it's actually right in between Orlando and Tampa. And one of the nice things about it is not many people know about it. Uh, so they do have full hookups there. They also have electric and water. They also have some boondocking spots. And what's nice about it is all the money that they raise at the campground is donated to the high school that gives kids that are graduating from high school they get an airline pilot's license, which is kind of neat. So if you're down that way, check it out. Watch our video. So planning our cross-country trip wasn't so bad. Although we did have a few hiccups. Uh, the couple, in two days we drove over 900 miles. That was not what we wanted to do, but the weather was too cold. And with my fibromyalgia, neuropathy, arthritis, I can't do cold weather for very long. So that put a strain on Bob because he had to drive 900 miles in two days. And finally on the third day that he got to rest, we stayed there three days again at the final stop. Uh, he did get a cold during that time. He had the cold about two, three weeks while we were on our trip. So that made for not so fun drive days also because you're not feeling well. Then on January 1st, I had fallen, hurt my, my shoulder. I actually thought I broke it. It was very painful through most of our trip, but I dealt with it. We got through it. Still kind of sore. So after watching the video and after watching the planning, we figured out that this really isn't that hard for anybody to do. So if you follow through and get you some apps, maybe even get you some memberships to some of the different campgrounds, you too can travel all the way across the United States. So let's see here our points that we had that got us to where we were at. So one, make sure you have a route that you're gonna follow. Two, the miles per day you wanna drive. Three, nights you want to stay and using your apps and your memberships this comes in very handy three four get that diesel card if you got diesel that'll save you a lot of money and have a safe trip and we'll see you in the next video we're also going to have another video coming up soon it's going to explain all of our different apps and our different clubs that we belong to thousand trails coast to coast things like that give you some prices get you some discounts uh, get you some free stays even at our coast to coast uh, we had coast to coast years ago back in the 80s and it's changed a lot it's a lot different now so we'll be getting into that kind of videos a little bit later to show you a little bit more about how we use our apps and how we use our uh, clubs to get what we need to do so if you like this video make sure you give us a thumbs up also give us a uh, subscribe we're trying to build our channel up. We're over 200 finally now. We're trying to get to that thousand. You know what it takes to get to a thousand. It takes a lot of you viewers to give us some support. So make sure you give us a few other thumbs up, like our video, put a comment down in the bottom. We love to respond to you. Tell us what you think about the video. Tell us which videos you watched that we had all the campsites on.